Here's an interesting challenge. I've got a commission to make a ring out of a 1960. Oops, this isn't this isn't showing very well. I don't know, this might be a little better. Uh, a 1960 shilling and a part of the problem is going to be what size hole do we bung in the middle because I'm thinking ideally we need to be equidistant otherwise the 60s is just going to be right on the edge so I think I'm going to have to pop a much smaller Let's zoom out a little bit so it makes a little bit more sense what I is saying, isn't it? Now, to further complicate this, this needs to be size R. Size R is almost the outside diameter of this coin. So I need to pop a hole in the middle and then open it out. Now, if I use this... Is one that's a standard die that I would use for a ring this size, a coin this size. But I don't think that's going to leave enough detail of the 1960. So the other option is going to be to use the quarter inch punch, which I think then should leave enough detail. Decisions, decisions. The only real way to be sure was to punch a hole in a donor coin. And as you'll see, that would have interfered with the um, 6-6 six, six, and also the 1-9, which is a shame. So... I have opted for a smaller L. That should turn out okay. I haven't deburred the inside of that yet. But I think, provided I can start stretching this out, the problem with the quarter inch hole is that when it comes to stretching it on the, oh, hang on, let's open it up. On this machine here, you can't actually get it onto the bit that stretches it. So it needs a little bit more engineering first before you can get it on here to start stretching it out. This one's gonna be a size R. As I said before, that is almost the same as the circumference of this ring, of this coin. So a little bit, oops. A little bit more work is going to be necessary on this particular ring. Right, back soon. First fold done and it's going to be a good choice to go for the quarter inch hole on there. Now, people often ask why do I use imperial sized punches all of those over there are imperial sized um, and they're from america americans still use imperial but for me the reason is these dies are for imperial sized coins all of the coins i work with are pre-decimalization so all of these are still in imperial sizes um, which means the folding dies work perfectly for our older pre-decimal coins. Okay, let's see about trying to stretch that hole. Didn't sound quite how I meant it. Well, we're getting there, but my concern is every time I try and take it a little bit larger we are stretching the limits of the thickness of 
this coin. And my worry is, and I'll just, just to show you, if we, um, if we, if I zoom out and pop this ring on the measuring mandrill, we're up to N and we need to get it up to R on this side as well. So, oh, doing this one handed because I'm holding camera. Give you an idea. That's basically an L on the non reeded side. That's a lot of, it's a lot of stretching. And having to be very, very careful to keep polishing this because the slightest crack in here will lead to the entire coin splitting. And then it won't be a ring, it will be scrap. So, quite a lot more work and quite a lot more on the blowtorch needed. Let's see how we go. Nobody is more surprised than I to be able to get this. It's our and a titch. But I don't want to muck around with it too much more. I'm quite pleased with the structure. I could possibly bring this in a fraction, but I think yeah, once I've put some um, ceramic lacquer on the finished article that should be a perfect R. I always like the next stage because it's where it turns this somewhat um, unappealing looking burnt thing into something slightly more polished like this. The problem with a nice shiny coin is it's difficult to focus on. <laughs> but look at the difference now. Oh, please focus. Anyway, um, so it's not a high gloss. It's a, it's a sort of like a gentle um, patina on there. Ooh. quite pleased with that I have to say I was a little apprehensive about taking a shilling up to a size R but I think that's it's actually worked out quite nicely and we've kept the 60-1960 on there so I'm going to darken this down a tad just like that. See how that works. Just to give it a, a little bit of patina. Let's plonk it down and see if I can focus a bit better. Just to demonstrate how that little bit of semi patina works. It just, it's a little bit of darkening around the the detail, the lettering, etc. And then again on the 60, if you have a look, the, let's get rid of the little bits of dust, just inside the six and the zero, just to highlight it. And we don't really want to polish that out too much. So I'm quite, uh, I'm quite proud of this. Um, I like that kind of like semi-aged feel to it. It could all be polished out to a high gloss, but no. Good, so there we are. 
a light patinaed 1960 one shilling coin made up to a size R. Get off. Sorry, too much dust. Too much dust. I need an air duster. Right. Next, which won't go in a public video, I will send a copy. Oh, God, bloody, bloody dust. I will tidy up my work area at some point. I'll send a copy of the video to the customer just to see uh, whether they're happy with it like this and then I will apply um, the ceramic lacquer but obviously that does wear off in time um, it can always be replaced with nail varnish nail gel right package this all up into a, a reasonable video and whack it on YouTube Oh, now much later in the day. Um, the video you've just watched up until now, I made as a, a secret private preview uh, for the customer who's commissioned this ring. Uh, I sent her a link and she's uh, replied she likes it, which always makes things worthwhile. Uh, so what I did was give it another... Uh, quick polish and clean and then made sure that the the type of patina was such that it kept its its um sort of feel of of not age as such but um i don't know a little bit of kind of nostalgic heritage i didn't want it looking too brand new um and so I'm about to send it off, pack it up, send it off. I'm going to send it with, this is a, a 66, I, this, this, I didn't have any other 60s. Uh, so it's a 66, just so she can show people uh, what the, the donor coin was like, if you like. And very, very sort of like <laughs> engineering that to that. I'm actually quite quite proud that I managed to do that. And I'm also quite proud because the hole that I knocked out in the middle, I'm gonna send her this as well. That's the that's the plug from the hole what I did knock out of the middle. Oh come on, arthritic fingers aren't really working very well at the moment. Let's pop it there. proud of this i don't um i don't do videos for all the coins i make uh, all the rings i make from coins obviously because oh i just don't i don't think it's really that interesting for a lot of people but as with the wedding rings recently and the morgan dollar unusual and challenging rings i'm making videos and this was unusual and challenging because i wanted to keep 60 there and the 19 nice which is why I had to go for that really really small hole and stretching that hole was not easy every time I say that I feel slightly uncomfortable <laughs> um, but yeah I'm pleased with that so it has been cleaned and put in a ceramic uh, lacquer. Now the ceramic lacquer is one that I got from America. And I think I've cleaned it up fairly nicely. It's one of these that, oh, it's unlike acrylic lacquers, it, it kind of dries with a glass-like finish and takes a, a fair bit of time to uh, wear off. It will wear off. But um, it will last longer than most of the lacquers. The other option is to powder coat it. 
which works, but I I think it 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 just takes away a little because it just ends up completely smooth when you powder coat it. It takes away that that free dimension from it. It just looks like it's kind of printed. Right, well that is about that. Um, so, customer likes it. I like it. I'm very proud of that. I don't know if it's um if it's a birthday present for someone or whether it's just for the customer. I didn't ask. Something else I didn't ask was how the customer found uh, and placed the order. I'm going to have to start asking, how did you find us? If you like this nonsense, please consider subscribing to the channel. There's all sorts of things that goes on on this channel, as most people have probably worked out by now. Um, I've got another channel, depending on which one you're watching this on, that won't make any sense at all. But the, um, the purpose of all this is uh, for a project which we call made by martin which is that i make stuff and i sell it in order to do other meaningful stuff if you like that go visit the site and you can see lots of groovy stuff like this thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope the customer has many many happy years wearing this beautiful 1960 one shilling coin ring. Cheers boys and girls, stay safe.